Welcome back to The Breakfast. And, and now we move in the conversation to Ikoyi, the building collapse where rescue operations seem to be rounding up. Uh, and of course, uh, the Lagos State government, of course, uh, still has on record more than 40 people, uh, 44 people actually confirmed dead um, in that very, very sad incident. Uh, we're going to be, of course, uh, speaking this morning with uh, Tunde Esson um, on this uh, issue. Um, but I, bef Mr. Esson, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, let, me, let me first of all start there. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning once again to you. Thanks for joining us. The Lagos State Government, and I'm just seeing this this morning, puts out a message on social media. It says, or it reads, it's a picture with a lot of candles, a very big candle light in the middle. I'm not sure who that represents. It says, even though this darkest hour of our lives, or even through this darkest hour of our lives, your light still shines in our hearts. As a government and a people, we join your families and loved ones to mourn your sudden departure. In total surrender to the will of the Creator, we cannot question May we all, as a people, receive comfort from the loving arms of our God. And that's from the Lagos State Government, with some candle, you know, lights, you know, around this image. Um, Mr. Esson, um, I've seen reactions to that, you know, and, you know, a couple of people say, you know, it seems to be also very irresponsible. That the Lagos State Government at this point should be thinking of criminal, you know, prosecutions and, and questions with regards whose failure led to the loss of those lives and not simply talking about the will of the creator at a time like this. Um, let's start with that. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. You know, we're very good at symbolism. Can, those candles can be used for better things instead of um, lighting candles for preventable causes. And that's the truth. We should be talking about people to hold accountable for this preventable um, it's not even an accident. It's almost manslaughter. And that's the truth. Right now is that who are the people to be held accountable for this sheer negligence that led to the death of, as of today, 44 persons. So enough of the symbolism. The government should get into, into it and, and all the corporates responsible for this. All them responsible. Okay, uh, let's also talk about, you know, the uh, search and rescue operation. Now, some persons are also saying that the government's uh, really not been very effective. And if the government had lived up to expectation that they had, more persons would probably be alive. Do you agree with that as well? Saying the kind of equipment, the manpower, everything is wrong. Let me ask you a question. If the third mainland bridge collapses today, what are we going to do? Light a million candles. Are we ready? Are we ready? No, we don't react until stuff happens. What is the state of rescue operation equipment in Lagos State, in Nigeria as a whole? No, we have to go to Julius Vega. We have to go to First Man to go and borrow equipment in order to be able to walk at all and run a government. No, we're not ready. We're just ready to light candles. That's what we do, isn't it? Produce more candles. It happens in Agog. Over a hundred people dead. Oh, candles everywhere. It happened with the Lagos, um, the, the Lekki Garden, uh, whatever candles. Now, well, candles again. So, if the lake, if the if the third mainland bridge collapses today, what is the rescue operation in place? None. So we don't have the equipment. We're just configured for death, and that's the truth. Life means nothing here. Life means absolutely nothing. It's really sad. So, what changes? Looking at what we change. That's what I'm concerned with. Because obviously, we do not have the equipment. We don't. And we, like I told you the last time I spoke with you guys, we can have this conversation again in two years' time. What's anybody going to do about it? What's anybody going to do about it? Absolutely nothing. We're not ready. So it's taking us, what, a week, November 1st today, to do what? To remove robbers, ordinary robbers. Nah, we're not ready. All right, Mr. Ison, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring in um, um, uh, Nick Agule. Uh, who's also joining the conversation this morning. Mr. Gulley, thanks for joining us. Good morning. Mr. Gulley, can you hear me clearly? Uh, uh, good morning. Uh, good sorry morning. for joining late. Again, I was struggling with my network. Oh, well, yeah. glad you finally made it. Let, let's bring you in with regards to the same question. On can you hear me? Yes, we can. Search and rescue operations. Uh, same question. So I, I, I want, you've lived in you know, different you know, uh, countries. Um, I'm sure you've also gotten to see, you know, the m mode of um, operation, the standard of operating procedures for, for, you know, situations like this. 
Um, Ikoyi, of course, is under Etiosa local government area. Uh, you would expect that Etiosa should have its own fire service, should have its own, you know, little bodies for healthcare, for infrastructure, for education, everything, you know, um, you know that, that um, is available. Etiosa also receives on the average 200 to 250 million naira monthly as local government allocations. Um, yet, when the Ikoyi building collapsed, the Lasema DG said that they waited for equipment to arrive from Mushi, um, and they wait for, waited for more than an hour before they could start proper search and rescue operations. Um, Nick Agule, what is your response to how Lagos has handled the search and rescue? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, before we go to search and rescue, I would like to say that, as it is said, prevention is better than cure. We should prevent things like this from happening. I mean, a skyscraper crumbling on itself, it points to only one reason. The engineering was got wrong. That is just what it is. If the engineering of that building was got right, that building will stand there for the next thousands of years. It's not going to have any issue. There are buildings that are taller than that. We have buildings, skyscrapers that are almost a hundred floors that are standing elsewhere in the world. So we need to have a government that works for us. And that takes me to, to your question, which is the search and response is zero. <clears throat> Let me say zero because you see, Nigeria is one country that does not even have an emergency number. And I will discuss this before. If you have an incident, the government needed to provide an emergency number that citizens can quickly dial. Nigerians have mobile phones in their hands. I think as at the last count, we're having almost 200 million mobile lines activated in Nigeria. That is a big advantage to the government that the citizens have these numbers in their hands. And the simple thing that the government is expected to do, very simple, is to install a system, be it 911, 999, whatever, and the telecom companies will activate this emergency response number. And government will have command and control centers around the country so that once a citizen picks up their phone and dials this number, Immediately, somebody is on the other end of the number asking them, is it fire service you want? Is it an ambulance you want? Or is it police? And once the citizen says, oh, I need a, a building just collapsed here, the emergency response is immediately activated. What that means is that the government has provided the citizens the opportunity to be able to report the happenings around them. That gives the government a widespread control of the country because the citizens have become effectively the watchers of their environment and they are fitting into government what is happening so that the government can respond. I mean, you see, as of today, this is the 21st century in Nigeria, policing, for instance, you have police mount roadblocks in one place. That is where they are every day. Even criminals know that at that particular point, the police are there. The day they want them, they go there and get them. You should have a policing system where <laughs> the citizens are able to report to the government through the command and control center that there is an incident happening in this location. And then government deploys resources to that location and deals with it. We don't if we have a simple thing like that, an emergency control, I mean, uh, an emergency number, we don't even have it in Nigeria. So I'm not surprised that the response system is that poor because we don't have a government that is working for us. Let me tell you one thing. When I used to live in Houston, it was a day I woke up, drove out from my lane, and I was trying to join the police parked a car on the road with flashing lights. And I was in my hands. See anything here? There's no accident. Nobody is uh, in trouble. Why? Why are the police, you know, blocking the road and all of that? It was after a while I noticed that it was a tree branch. A tree branch had 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 cut off 
but it was still hanging on the tree. And the police had to come and block the road so that citizens don't pass under that tree and had that uh, possibility or chance of that tree branch falling on them. This is government working for the people. We don't have a government. You know, in the UK where I live, you cannot drive on the roads. They say to have a driver's license because the government that owns the roads ensures that only those who are licensed drive this road because they want to protect citizens. They want to protect the road users from people who don't know how to drive. In Nigeria, you can just go and get a driver's license without ever starting the ignition key in the car. And you have a driver's license. So these are the issues. We don't have a government right. that's working for us, and the government will just have to rise up to its responsibilities and work for Nigerians. All right, so let's bring in Tunde Swan at this point. Uh, what conversations do you think that uh, we should be having at this point in time? It's a very sensitive issue. I mean, uh, right now we're having candles and what have you, and it feels like, you know, rescue oppressions have actually ended. However, uh, what action should government be taking at this point, and what conversation should we be having? It's not sensitive. It's not sensitive. I'm sorry. When I say it's not sensitive, I'm not being sensitive. The conversation we're going to have in 10 years, in years, next year, nothing is going to change. Nothing is going to change. Do you know that if you look at the 2019 amendments to the Urban and Regional Planning and Development Law of Lagos State, it states that any building that is over two levels, that's over two story, must have a certificate of insurance. This must be insured. And I can tell you that nobody, absolutely nobody, obeys that. Every building that's over two story must have a certificate of insurance. I can tell you for free that it's not impossible that this trading story building that collapsed did have insurance cover. It's not impossible. And there's not even a lot of the workers there. There's no manifest. So we are guessing who died, who didn't die. What are their names? No, no identity, no records. So that's, that's, that speaks to the fact that human rights mean nothing to us. It means nothing. We are configured for them. Nothing, there's nothing here that says that you ought to leave. No, everything is programmed for death. And that is true. And nothing is going to change. Because by now, by now, by now, over a week later, people should be in police next. Some people should be in police next. Or we should have updates on, on the steps being taken by this in the investigation to bring the corporates to book. No, when about commission of it. We won't know what went wrong. Look at what other Nick said. He said it was some kind of program or a structural fault. It was bound to happen. Nobody is talking about the remaining two buildings. Are you bring it are you, are you gonna bring them down? No. We're talking about commission of inquiries. We're talking about a black day in Lagos. We're talking about candles. So the government knows what to do. People are criminally liable. People killed people. This is outright negligence leading to manslaughter. No, nobody's talking about that. And you say it's sensitive? No, it's not sensitive. It just, it just shows who we are as a people. We don't like us, and that's the truth. All right. Um, I'm gonna, um, let's go back to Nikagule now. Uh, we're almost out of time. Would you expect in a sane society that the, uh, you know, the victims' families, because they're talking about wrapping up search and rescue, um, but uh, there's no confirmation that every single person who is missing has been found yet. Um, would you expect, you know, in a sane society, that the Lagos State government should maybe be sued that four score, you know, um, homes or, you know, the name of the company should be sued um, because of the negligence that we are seeing here. That maybe even Lasema should be sued because of the negligence that we've seen right from the day one of search and rescue. Shouldn't this be the fears that should put government on their feet all the time? Certainly. Certainly, there has to be, like uh, uh, my, my co-panelist said, there has to be consequences arising from this. And the consequences have to begin from those who should have prevented these, on this, this incident from, and they did not do their work, to those who should have quickly activated an emergency response system that didn't also do their work. And you have listed all the parties involved, the company, the developer, the, the company that is the developer, the, the government of Lagos State, the local government, everybody, even the, the, the firm of professionals, like the, the architects, the, 
the, the structural engineers, the builders, you know, all of those professionals that were working on this site, they should all have criminal liabilities coming to their doorsteps. That is the only way that is going to stop this kind of thing from happening in the future. And I will expect that to happen. But again, you know, these are the issues that afflict us as a country. You take these issues to court, and who knows, in the next 10 years, 20 years, we are still talking about adjournments, we are still talking about this. So holistically, Nigeria has to be revamped because things are so wrong in different sectors. A country where you cannot quickly get justice. And we talk about foreign direct investment. Who is going to bring his money into an economy that he knows that when he has to choose and goes to the judiciary, the judiciary might not give him judgment during his lifetime? Or if they give judgment, they said judgment. A country where the judiciary is being accused of corruption. These are the issues. It doesn't give us any good image. So the families, I will say the families, despite the fact that the judicial system is not sharp, let them test, let them test the law. Let them come together in a class action. Let them not go individually. They come together so that they can share the cost and all of that, and they can even go on crowdfunding. If they raise a, an appeal for, for Nigeria to support them so that they can take this case to court, we will be supporting them with our monies so that this thing should not happen again. Because like my co-panelist said, if we don't do these things, we'll come back here and ana analyze another building collapse. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, you know, as a Nigerian and as a TV anchor, there's some stories that I'm, I am honestly emotionally drained of talking about because it's, you know, it hurts, you know, to continue to go, you know, in these circles, you know, circles every other month, you know, and continue to see these levels of failure and incompetence, you know, affect lives you know it's it, it's a different case if it's incompetence you know that led to a flat tire or something but when it takes 40 lives it cannot just be pushed under the rug but we're out of time Tunde Asan, i truly appreciate your time thank you very much for joining us nika Gule also we thank you for for being with us this morning looking forward to speaking with you both again thank you all right, this is where we, this is nice where we anchor. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. And uh, we're hoping that uh, we will not just be about the talking, but would also be about the doing. We hope that the Lagos state government would rise up to do the need for, and uh, justice should be meted at this point in time. Now, if you miss up on the conversation, it's all right to catch up on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. It's at Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Bopo. Do have a great morning. And I am Osaogi Ogbawa. Have a great Wednesday.